Welcome to this annotated anatomy video that's going to detail the branches of the internal iliac artery. So before we look at these specific branches, let's just go over the drawing that's on the screen at the moment. So here we're looking into a right hemipelvis, we're looking at its medial surface here. Here we have posteriorly, we have the fifth lumbar vertebrae articulating with the sacrum. So here's S1 through to S5 and here's the coccyx. So here's going to be the sacral promontory here. Anteriorly we have the pubic symphysis and we have the superior pubic ramus. Here we can see the obturator foramen and obturator internus muscle lining its medial aspect. Covering obturator internus is the tough obturator fascia and here we can see a defect in this fascia and that's the obturator canal. We'll come back to that later on. Here we can see the tendinous arch formed by a toughening of that fascia that is offering attachment sites for levator ani muscle. So here we can see levator ani sweeping down to cover the pelvic outlet and it's going to unite with the contralateral pelvic floor muscles. We can see a couple of defects here, one for the urethra, one for the rectum, and if this was a female pelvis, then we'll have another one in between for the vagina. Here we can see another one of those pelvic floor muscles, not levator ani, but this is coccygeus. So here we have coccygeus coming from the inferior aspect of the coccyx and running towards the ischial spine. So here's the ischial spine, an important landmark. And superior to coccygeus, we have piriformis, coming from the anterior surface of the sacrum to pass out of the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen. So a couple of important landmarks, obturator internus muscle, the obturator canal, the tendinous arch, levator ani muscles of the pelvic floor, coccygeus of the pelvic floor, piriformis, which remember isn't part of the pelvic floor muscles, the greater sciatic foramen here, and here's the ischial spine. So now let's detail those branches of the internal iliac. So here we can draw the common iliac artery, and the common iliac artery is formed at the bifurcation of the aorta, about L4, L5, the intervertebral disc in between. And here we're looking at the right common iliac artery, which itself splits into two. It splits into an external and into an internal iliac. We'll just deal with the external first. So here's the external iliac branching off the common iliac. The external iliac doesn't really supply a great deal to the pelvic viscera, but this extends forward, runs over the superior pubic rami, and it's going to run deep to the inguinal ligament. Just before it runs under the inguinal ligament, it gives off a branch that runs up towards the anterior abdominal wall muscles, and this is known as your inferior epigastric artery, and this is an important landmark that you should be familiar with. Once the inferior epigastric artery has been given off, it passes deep to the inguinal ligament, where it then becomes the femoral artery, and the femoral artery courses towards the lower limb. So here we have the femoral artery. So a common iliac splits into two, external iliac and the internal iliac. The external iliac runs towards the lower limb where it becomes the femoral artery once it passes under the inguinal ligament and before it goes under the inguinal ligament it gives rise to the inferior epigastric artery. So if we just concentrate on the internal iliac, then the internal iliac itself is also going to split into two main trunks. We call these the anterior and the posterior trunks of the internal iliac. So here we have the anterior trunk and here we have the posterior trunk. And we're just going to detail the anterior trunk first of all. The anterior trunk gives off a slender artery that runs towards the anterior abdominal wall. And as it does so, it gives off numerous branches that go on to supply the bladder. So here we have the umbilical artery, the umbilic umbilical artery coming off the anterior trunk. Eventually it runs towards the anterior abdominal wall and becomes obliterated as the obliterated umbilical artery. And this runs within the anterior abdominal wall as the medial umbilical ligament. 
Along its course, like I said, it gives off numerous branches that run towards the fundus of the bladder. And these are known as your superior vesicle artery. And you can have three, four, five of these. So we have a superior vesicle here, and I'll just draw another one in here. So anterior trunk initially gives off the umbilical artery, which becomes obliterated. And this umbilical artery gives off superior vesicle arteries that supply the superior aspect of the bladder or the fundus. The anterior trunk continues. It gives off a second branch, and this branch is going to head towards the obturator canal, and this is the obturator artery. Obturator artery doesn't actually supply any structures within the pelvis, but it passes out of the pelvis to supply the medial aspect of the thigh. It supplies the adductor group. It runs along obturator and turnus muscle to leave the pelvis via the obturator canal, the defect in the obturator fascia. The anterior trunk continues, it gives off, if we have a superior vesicle, it's going to give off an inferior vesicle, and here we can see the inferior vesicle artery coming off the anterior trunk. Inferior vesicle is going to supply the base of the bladder, it's going to supply, supply the prostate. If this was a female specimen, then the inferior vesicle artery wouldn't be present, but in fact you'd have a uterine artery. And I'll just do this in the different colour, I'll do it in blue just to highlight the female. In the female, no inferior vesicle artery, but you'd have a uterine artery instead. And this is important because the uterine artery also gives off a branch that goes towards the vagina. And this is known, obviously, as the vaginal artery. So in the male, we have the inferior vesicle artery. In the female, we have the uterine artery, supplies the uterus. And the uterine artery gives off the vaginal artery that supplies the vagina. And that's the only main difference between the male and the female when we're looking at the branches of the internal iliac. If we continue with the anterior division, then the anterior division terminates by giving off two branches. It gives off a branch that goes to the rectum, and this is known as the middle rectal artery. Not all people have this middle rectal artery. It's commonly seen in about 60% of the population, but like I say, not everyone has it. And then the final termination of the anterior division of the internal iliac is the internal pudendal artery. This artery is important as it actually goes to supply the perineum. So to do that, it needs to leave the pelvis, and it passes out of the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen, just inferior to piriformis, which we can see here. It then passes out of the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen to loop around the ischial spine and the sacrospinous ligament that attaches to it, to then run deep, and I'll just draw it deep via these dotted lines, to run deep to the pelvic floor muscles. So here we can see it running deep to levator ani, those pelvic floor muscles, to go and supply the perineum. We'll come back to this artery in a bit more detail in a later screencast. So here we can see the middle rectal artery, the final terminating branch of the anterior trunk alongside the internal pudendal. It's important you make sure it's the internal pudendal. You also have an external pudendal, which comes from the external iliac. So internal pudendal and middle rectal, those final two divisions of the anterior trunk. So now let's briefly have a look at the posterior trunk. The posterior trunk can give off a couple of smaller arteries, the iliolumbar and the lateral sacral artery, but I won't draw them on here because it'll overcomplicate the issue. But if we just look at the posterior trunk, then this really gives off two main branches, both of which are associated with the piriformis muscle. We have a branch that leaves the pelvis superior to piriformis and a branch that leaves the pelvis inferior to piriformis. The branch that leaves superior to piriformis is the superior gluteal artery, and the branch that leaves inferior to piriformis is the inferior gluteal artery. Both of these arteries then leave the pelvis via the greater sciatic foramen to supply the gluteal region. Superior gluteal supplying gluteus minimus and gluteus medius, inferior gluteal supplying gluteus maximus.
So an important landmark to be seen within the pelvis is piriformis muscle, and by finding that, you should be able to locate both superior gluteal and inferior gluteal.